I don't know what I did. I honestly can't tell you. But I pulled my back somehow or twisted my back somehow and all of a sudden I couldn't stand straight. It feels like I pulled a muscle in my right side, like kind of on the lower side of my back. I'm not that type of person to like go to the ER. I used to be, like I used to go to the ER, oh my God, years ago for the dumbest things in the world. They probably just would dismiss her for almost everything because of her weight. Am I wrong in saying that, dude? Because like at the point that she's at, it's it's very easy to go, oh, you have back problems, your weight. Oh, your leg is uh, inflated, your weight. Oh, wow. You have like a giant like rash on the side of your body. It's probably the chafing from all of the weight. So it's very easy for doctors to look at that stuff and go, this makes sense. It's probably due to the weight. You should be losing weight. And it seems really weird that Amber doesn't look at any of this stuff as because of the weight. Am I wrong in saying that, dude? But if you guys don't know, we're going over the Amberlynn Reed health scares throughout the years because she's going through another health scare as is right now. She, If you guys don't know about the lore, I'll, I'll, I'll catch you up. As of the time of this making this video, okay, I could be missing something, but Amber is worried that she has cancer because she had peed blood and she thought that it was a UTI and she went to go get tested and she did not have a UTI. So in order to see what it actually was, she had to go get a CT, a CT scan, but she was too big to actually get a CT scan. <laughs> So she had to wait and get the CT scan somewhere else, and now she's waiting for the results, which none of this is good, by the way. None of it. Thinking about the scenario of not being able to fit in machines, and by the way, like, the CT, machi the CT machines are elegantly designed. Like, these are ginormous, big-ass machines, and the fact that, like, Amber can't fit into these things is not surprising, but it's also very, very sad that Amber is in a position to where she, she literally cannot fit into this stuff, so she has to go to, like, one of those deluxe ones physically made for fat people so it's very difficult but it, it's the life that she's chosen to go on I, there's no other way to say it than that I, the fact that she's been doing this now for i mean this is 2019 right here right but she's been living this life of massive obesity for more than a decade at this point and i mean it seems like it's catching up because it seems like every year she has another problem and another problem and it may seem like small issues but the problem with like the issues that she has is that even though they're small issues, they add up. Like, waking up with back problems is not like an anomaly, but she breaks, she wakes up with problems all the time. Not just back problems, like her ankles will be an issue today. Oh, my lipedema is acting up. Oh no, I can't like stand up straight because my back is hurting. Ah, oh, sorry guys, I can't fit into the CT. You see me, I, I woke up and I started peeing blood. Like it's always something with Amber or like a rash or like I just couldn't get out of my bed this morning. Like it's just things that you and me probably would never have to deal with. But for somebody like Amber, it's just normal. Like, this is just her daily life is just waking up with issues consistently over and over and over and over again. And I've been told that, like, as you get older, your life is like DLCs. Like, you wake, like, at, you're 20 and you have no problems. But, like, every year past 25, you start getting more and more issues. And every year is like a DLC pack. Like, oh, you can no longer do this anymore. Or it's going to be harder to, you know, like start navigating the world in certain ways because you now have new issues in how you're approaching stuff, right? So for Amber, she's just doing that. Like she's speed running it and she's having these issues just <laughs> gradually stack onto her even in her early years. Like she shouldn't be having as many issues as she is. She's only 33 years old. And here in 2019, she would be 29, 28 years old. Which is really sad, but that's the life that she's chosen to live. I'm up on my back. ER, oh my god, years ago for the dumbest things in the world. So update on my back. The pain did start three days ago, and every day I wake up, it does feel better. Almost went to the ER last night because I was like, maybe it's time. It's Just life. Because I don't walk myself peeing doesn't mean I don't do it. Right. Hashtag Amber, I don't think Amber drinks a lot of liquids throughout the day. And to be fair, she would need a lot of liquids to supply all that weight across her body. And I'm pretty sure I've heard her say before, like at some points in her life, her pee was very, very thick, which is not good, by the way. And at somebody of her size, I mean, she does drink a lot of soda throughout the day. I have seen her do this. And it's almost kind of like any time she can drink anything besides water, she will take that opportunity to do that and I get it. There are a lot of people out there that think that water doesn't taste like anything. And because of that, um, they don't drink it. And to, to me, I think you're a bitch because water does taste 
extraordinarily amazing. And I understand that coffee tastes better or soda tastes better or juice tastes better. And I'm not saying you can't drink those things, but maybe within moderation and then always try to make the liquid of your choice, the one that you're drinking the most out of the day, it should almost always be water. And it, it should be the, the number one thing that you drink. Like, it's okay to drink coffees on the side and stuff like that. Like, you know I drink the coffees. And I have, like, a caffeine addiction. And I don't even really even feel the caffeine most of the time. It's because I drink so much caffeine. Not like – I knew a guy that used to – that take – a gram of caffeine every single day and he would never even drink coffee like he told me it was gay to drink coffee because he saw a gay man drink it one time when he was 16 he just thought it was gay from that point on and what he would do was he would drink it he would t ingest the caffeine through caffeine pills and if you don't know caffeine pills are very easy to take literally just a pill you just put it in your mouth for me it's very difficult if you ever see me swallow a pill I have to like struggle and I have to like t coax myself into it and to like try to like motivate myself to take a pill I have a very hard time putting that stuff in my mouth but Either way, um, I don't have like a big problem in terms of caffeine. I'm probably only taking about 400 milligrams a day, which is really not that much in comparison to some people I know. But I know for me personally, I probably should probably should get off the caffeine as much as I possibly can. But fuck that shit. I'm not a bitch. I'm not going to do that. But um, for somebody like Amber, dude, uh, yeah, she should be 100% looking at that. And by the way... If it really hurts that much to where you're thinking about going to the, the to the hospital, you probably should. That should be the number one thing that you should do. Uh, I know that I'm one of these people that just refuses to go to the hospital unless it's like really, really big. Like I had ankle pain or like the back, the back right side of my Achilles tendon was like really irritated the last few days. And it kept, it was like worse, worse, worse. And then eventually I was like, oh, maybe I should go to the doctor. But then that next subsequent day, there was no pain at all. So I was like, eh, oh, I guess it's not that bad at all. And I know a lot of guys specifically do not go to the doctor and they think it's gay or homosexual to go and display some type of like problems with your body. When in reality, it's not gay at all. Actually, it's probably the most masculine thing you could do is take care of yourself because if you care about you know, the people that you're with, significant others and things such and so forth, it's probably really, really good to ensure that you are not the type of person that's just going to roll with illnesses as if it's like a good thing. Bro, it, you, you live in 2024. It's not like it was back in like, I don't know, the, the old school times where you would have to throw water, you would have to throw water at somebody to judge if they were a witch or not, or, you know, sell your daughter off for three horseshoes to feed your family for the next four weeks. It's not like that anymore. Like, you don't have to live with diseases. You can go to the hospital, you can get it diagnosed, and you can get that shit treated. It's not that big of a deal anymore. But a lot of dudes don't think like that. Anyway. I don't pee a lot in one day. But I'm trying. They were. I would love to know how much she pees in one day. Like, what is the optimal amount of pee for somebody in one day? If I were to say, I drink on average probably around 120 ounces of water every single day. Maybe even a little bit more depending on the day if I'm outside, if I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff, right? Maybe a little bit more. But usually around 100 to 120 ounces a day. And I pee approximately once in the morning. Once after that, like two hours later, probably in in a day, I'm peeing five times, maybe six times if I'm drinking a lot of water. Um, for somebody like Amber, oh, and by the way, sometimes what I'll do is if I know I'm gonna be busy, I'll pee even if I don't have to pee because I have a little bit of pee, you know. So sometimes it'll be like six or seven times in a day, or eight times in a day because I'm not actually peeing the full load. I'm just peeing that like little, you know, what I'm talking about that little bitch pee shit. Before I'm drinking all this. But I don't pee a lot. And you know what's interesting about Amber is that she she does this thing where she goes, I don't do this a lot. And then she'll try to like focus in on it. Like she'll hone in on, I don't pee a lot. Therefore, I'm going to drink a lot of water. She'll do that for two weeks. Less than that. My bad. She'll do that for one week. And then it'll never be ever again. And the problem with this is like you're not actually building up any type of like structure of drinking water or anything. And really, because you're not doing it consistently enough to ensure that you're going to be good at it later on, if that makes any sense. So... For somebody like Amber, it's uh, terrible. It's really, really bad that she doesn't – like, she's not in the position to where she is, like, actually building up the 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 foundation of drinking water. She's like – she does it for a week. And this is, like, her in general. Like, she always looks for quick fixes. And then when she finds out that it's going to take a little bit longer than what she thinks it is, she she immediately relapses on it, and uh, which is really bad. I, I pee – about three to four times a day. Okay. That's how I know I don't have... Di three to four times a day? So like once in the morning, once in the middle of the day, and once at night? Nah, girl. You need to drink more water than that. That's crazy, bro. Three to four times a day? Nah, up that to two more. Two more at least, dude. That's... that's no, three is actually insane. Is the pee like solid brick yellow, bro? Like what are we talking about? Three times a day is Seriously not good. Plus I've been tested three or four times a day. Yeah. About three times. 
Yesterday it was three times. That's really not good. I if you if you're drinking a good amount of water, usually you, what you're looking for is like a light pee, like a light yellow pee when you when you when you urinate because that insignifies that you're properly hydrated, right? But for somebody like Amber, if you're peeing three times a day, I couldn't imagine anything more than straight yellow, like ridiculously like school bus orange type shit. Because there's no way that if you're peeing three times a day, that it's gonna be anything more than that. From the moment I wake up to the time I'm going to bed, it's like how many times I pee up. I know it's more than three. Yeah. Really? Yeah, easily. Hannah and Rafe left a couple hours ago, and I'm actually about to go to the hospital. Today. Gnarly bladder infection, dude. How does she have... Okay, look. I'm not obese, and I've never been obese, and I've never had an experience with being obese, right? I mean, I've, I've known people in my life, but most of the people that I know that were overweight or obese um, were, were dudes, right? And most of these guys don't really talk about the deep, the deep details of being fat. Right, and they're never they've never been around the size of Amber, which is crazy, right? Because I'm friends with a lot of big, 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 burly black men with afros and things such and so forth. These guys never have problems with their weight, and if they do, it's almost always like, damn, my titties is touching my ankles again, dog. I, I hate that, man. My girl was trying to suck on my titties again, dog. I hate that. I, I see that a lot, but I don't ever see like I got a bladder infection, I got a UTI. But then again, they're black guys, so they have a lot of they have a lot of urethra, so they may not have like the same. For me personally, I've never had a UTI, and even if I like threw my dick in like the Atlantic Ocean or something like that and came back and there were like piranhas or like eels or like whatever else is in the the Pacific, uh, they I wouldn't I would be alright because like the gap in between the urethra and then where my bladder is right is like miles right it's like crazy so it would be a long time before that happened and by that time i'm peeing out of everything that was already in there to begin with right but for somebody like amber it seems like she always gets like yeast not yeast infections she always gets utis she's always getting bladder infections this happens way too frequently for me not to think that it has something to do with her weight so if you know anything about this and you're a little bit more knowledgeable than me please let me know the er because that pain is still there in my back. Of course, it's nowhere near as bad as it was, but it's like a constant dull ache. So this whole, like the pain in her back was not actually a pain in her back, but it was more so like because the bladder is back there. In my right lower back, kind of where you'd get some... Dude, she's like out of breath from just telling the story. Like you're, ju you're just sitting down. You're sitting down telling us about this problem that you're having. Girl, where are your eyebrows at? Damn, bro. She is bro. 2019 to 2020, our girl was really inflated, dude. Like, she looked like she she was allergic to, like, nine different things, but she just never stopped herself from eating it. Kidney pain. So, I, for one, am worried, and I want to get that checked out or just see what the hospital says. It is midnight so i'm going at a time where not a lot of people did she like always goes at the weirdest points in in time right like if i'm going to the er it's usually going to be in the middle of, it's probably it's going to be either in the middle of the day or early in the day obviously if something happens in later in the day but like i'm saying people tend to go to the er for bullshit okay like i remember one time i was at the er and i had COVID at the time and i was waiting to be seen and there was a lady in there and she was asking me like, oh, honey, how you, how you doing, baby? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm good. I'm just waiting for you to see a doctor. She's like, what you here for? I was like, oh, I just got a really bad, like, sore throat. I think I might have COVID. I'm not really sure. Like, I think that, you know, like, I'm, I'm really battling this shit. And I was like, why are you here? She's like, oh, she was like, oh, baby, my wrist, my wrist, you know, my wrist. And I was like, what's wrong with this? She's like, this is just a little pain. I'm just going to get it checked up on. Like, there's so many people that just go to the ER for things that just you don't need to go to the ER for. Like, it, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I think I might have sprained my ankle. Like, I get it. Like, it might be a lot of pain. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor or whatever. But a lot of people just go to the ER for bullshit. And it's really tragic because sometimes, like, I remember one time I was there and they kicked a guy out that was literally throwing up, like, profusely outside of the ER because, like, they didn't have enough beds. I think this guy was, like, ODing on something. But they just, like... Dude, we have other people to treat. And I was just sitting there waiting to be seen. But there was like 40 other people in front of me. I just walked out because I was like, even though this is like a jarring issue for me, if this was a separate occasion, I was like, it's not worth it. I'll come back another day. It's like, it's crazy to me, dude. And even me, like I don't go to the doctors very often. I mean, I go like at least every six months to get my checkups, to get everything, my blood work, to get make sure everything I'm healthy, right? But 
A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just go to the ER and whenever they have issues and they just, they're bullshit issues. Like they're not actual things that you need to go to the ER for. I'm not saying that Amber shouldn't be going to the ER for a bladder infection, but it's just like crazy to me how she like postpones it. Like you could have easily went to the doctor anytime before this point. Cause it's like, it's a bladder infection, right? Am I wrong? They're going at 12 at night. Why didn't you go at six in the morning? Why didn't you go at 12 and 12 in the afternoon? Why didn't you go at two in the afternoon? Why didn't you go to five? 12 is like crazy. It means like you knew this was a problem all throughout the day. And instead of going any of those times, you chose to go at 12. People are usually there. I just know that if something is wrong with my kidneys, I better nip it in the butt now. I just got my blood taken. Damn, it's got to be really crazy. Uh, Cause like I know some people that are not fat at all. Damn, bro, you can't even see that choker. That's crazy as fuck. I know some people that are not even fat and they have a hard time getting the vein, right? For me, you can see my veins, right? Like it's easy to get to where my veins are, but I know people that have really, really like ambiguous veins and you just can't see it and they have to poke a few times to get to the vein or whatever. I couldn't even imagine how many times you have to poke amber to even find where the, the fucking vein is. And then the, the, when they pull blood too, it probably moves like molasses. Like it's just like, you know, squirting out at like a very snail pace traumatizing my kidneys were just in my brain <laughs> really bad and i've never suffered with like a uti or a bladder infection so i was scared <laughs> i get back pain a lot dude this choker just should not even be on your neck at this point if i'm lit first of all we need to also talk about this back the fuck up dude why the fuck am i looking at your whole entire face put this camera back Jesus Christ, you're going to melt that whole frame. But, but with the breath that I'm, 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 I'm smelling from the screen right now, get rid of the choker. I don't even know why you have it at this size. If you're so fat that I can't even see the choker anymore, there's no point of having it. It's literally, I don't even see it. Where is it? It's gone. It's being swallowed up by the necks. And this didn't feel like any back pain I've ever experienced. So I knew... Such a crazy ass thing to say like, oh yeah, I usually experience a lot of back pain, but this was a different type of back pain. So I knew this different type of back pain was different. So I had to go to the doctor and get that checked up on. Like really think about that. That means like you live your life so immune to this back pain. Like you just like, it's just normalized for you. But like this new back pain is different. So therefore you have to check up on it. Like why are you dealing with this back pain in general? I knew a girl that had H boobs, right? Always had back pains. She lost a lot of weight. Her boobs went down to, I think, like a double or a triple D. And back pain gone. Back pain all gone. Now, granted, these double, these triple Ds, insane. But still, the point I'm making is when you have a lot of mass on your body and sometimes you just can't help it, um, it's tough. Because, like, what do you even do in that situation? But when you're somebody of this size, and I hate when these people say this stuff, when they go like, oh, no. I don't have back pain because of my weight. I always think like, what are you fucking dumb? What are you talking about? Of course you do. That's such a crazy thing to even say. Why would you even, why would you even think that that wasn't a possibility? Like the weight on your body is not going to negatively affect your, your, your back joints or anything like that. That'd be like double quadruple stacking a Prius and expecting the car to stop on a dime. Obviously not. Dude, this car is like overstacked to the brim. You can't expect the car to operate to peak, to to peak capacity if you're over here stacking cinder blocks on it. Same shit here. Obviously, your back's gonna have suffering some type of trauma if you're just abusing that shit consistently with all the weight. Something's something's a little off. I kept telling people like <laughs> telling people that in my life. Dude, it's so it's so close that it's like blurring. Like the camera doesn't even know what is and what is not a face. <laughs> a lot. It's a very bad habit, and that's one of the ways you can get a bladder infection. I... How often are you holding your pee where you're getting a bladder infection, dude? Like, is there never a bathroom nearby? Like, you, you don't go out very often. And when you do go out, you're going to restaurants or you're going to grocery stores. So if you're going to these establishments very frequently, I know for a fact if you go into a restaurant, they have... They have a uh, publicly accessible bathrooms and the same thing with grocery stores. I've never been to a grocery store that didn't have a bathroom that you could go into. Now, granted, maybe if you're going to the bathroom, it's like really bad and disgusting or whatever. I don't know how it is in women's bathrooms, but I've been told that like women are like rodeoing fucking tampons. Like they're pulling out tampons and then just like tossing them at the wall or whatever. And after they use pads, they're sticking them to the wall. I don't know how accurate that is. I've only talked to a few women about this, so I don't know if that's real. I hope it's not real. That sounds crazy. But like in the men's bathroom, I've seen a ton of shit too. I've seen a dude literally drop ass on the seat, like standing up, like the door was open. He knew what he was doing and he was perfectly fine with everybody seeing what he was doing fully on display and drop straight butt cheeks right on top of the seat itself, man. It's crazy as fuck. I remember literally being in high school 
and I walked in. I used to like walk from the bottom floor to the top floor, wherever I was. So that way I can, cause I, I hated going to school. So I was like, anytime I can get out of the class, I would, I would literally try to expand that as much as I possibly can the time. So I would walk from the bottom floor to the top floor to try to get to the bathroom up there. And I remember one time I walked in and I went to the Haitian side. And no, like I've talked to my friends about this dude, but we had a whole Haitian section of the school because we had so many Haitian kids at the school. And the Haitian section was dedicated to these kids that were Haitian, obviously. And they would learn English or they would learn different language, uh, the, 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 learn in different ways compared to the rest of the school. Anyway, I walked in. I was in the Haitian section. And I walked in and there was this Haitian kid. And he was just fucking dropping straight ass on the urinal. Like, I remember, I, I swear, like, I walked in. I, I looked over. Like, I walked, opened the door. I looked over. And I saw this dude. Like, I didn't move my head because I just looked at him. He saw me too. He, like, looked at me. He smiled and just kept doing, kept looking at the ground and proceeded to drop ass right into the urinal. And, um, you know, me, I'm not the type of dude that really likes using urinals. So I went to the regular stall to piss. But, you know, thinking about it sometimes now, I think like, dude, I can't even believe I saw that. Like, I can't even believe that there was there's like a janitor at the end of the day that goes in and cleans up that that bathroom and sees that hot log on the fucking brim of the urinal and has to clean that shit up it's crazy but i've seen that and it, it was uh i wouldn't say it was common but it's disgusting nonetheless i remember literally being in this one in my middle school we had radiators i don't know if schools nowadays have radiators obviously if the school's older maybe but the school i went to was like really underfunded and really shit and we used to have like fights in it all the time i swear we were on lockdown for like half the year but there was kids there were kids that would used to go into the hallway and they would piss on the radiators. They would pee on the radiators in the summertime at the very beginning of the school year. Or they would pee on them right before they would turn on. And then when they did turn on, they would cook the piss. And then the entire fucking floor, <laughs> the entire floor would smell like literal hot butt cheeks. Um, you know, piss water for the entire rest of the school year. You can't clean that shit off, bro. That shit's in the air at that point, dude. And that was a common thing. That was a very common thing. I don't know why people did that. It is what it was. I don't know, man. People used to abduct your backpacks, too. They would literally take your backpacks. And, like, if you weren't looking, I did this, too. They would take your backpacks, and they would go, can I use the bathroom? They would go, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And they would take your backpacks on the way out without you noticing. And then you would never see a backpack ever again. To this day, I bet if you went to that school right now, and there was probably a place that even, like, the custodians probably don't even know about. That if you removed, like, you pulled it back, there would be, like, a hole in the wall of, like, 80 backpacks um, from all the kids that lost their backpacks, dude. It was, it was probably crazy. I don't know. But that happened a lot. They never got my backpack. That's why if you ever see me chilling with a bag, I got it wrapped around my leg or I'm holding on to it because, bro, you're not taking my shit. Like, I'm not I've, – I've been in scenarios where dudes try to take my shit or, like, you know, walk away with my shit. Nah, dude, I'm not doing that. Fuck you. That's so why I always got it wrapped around my leg, dude. You already know. And I'm not even talking about the bag either. You know what I'm talking about when I said I'm wrapped it around my leg. I can hold my pee for hours. That's a crazy ass. You should never. It, you, it's all right to build up the pee and wait maybe 30 to an hour. But, dude, you shouldn't be going longer than that. That's crazy. Hours is insane. I have a wisdom tooth that I've been dealing with for almost 10 years now. Like, the pain comes and goes. And there's nothing a dentist can do at the point at this point because I can't go under anesthesia. Oh man, that's tragic, bro. Oh, that's so bad. You can't do anything because of this weight, Amber. How do you like you go through so much of your life, a decade, you've had this problem, and like it consistently becomes a problem. The problem doesn't go away. It just it keeps becoming a problem more and more and more. And like the, if the issue then was, oh, you're too fat to go into anesthesia, therefore we can't operate to get this tooth out, and then you still have this problem 10 years later, why are you still fat? Why are these continuously being issues, Amber? Why is the weight always the least common denominator here? This weight. I went to the dentist about two years ago regarding okay. it, and I was definitely lighter than I am now. Well, I was lighter than I am now. Ugh, grammar. Yeah, 2019, she was like peak, bro. This was like crazy weight. She was lying about her weight, too. She said her max weight was like 557 or whatever, 579, I think. And she didn't weigh herself past that point because she just didn't want to see the scale, which makes sense because if you see the number, you're gonna probably going to scare you more. But like, so really think about this. Like, you see 579 and you're like, all right, I'm not weighing myself any more than that. The, you're, the weight is going up, but you're, you're like... 
the crazy thing is you looked at 579 and you were eye right with that because you kept gaining weight you know what i'm talking about but like anything above that for some reason you're looking at that going like oh i can't even believe that so she could possibly have been easily in the 600s i mean no joke at this point people think that right now that she's lying about her weight like she could easily be in the fives uh in the, in the deeper fives than she is right now but back then most definitely like in the 2020s dude whoa bro she was easily i mean if she was five if she was 579 at her or at a peak crazy ass fucking weight by the way she's bulking phase for literally a decade and then like you're you're concerned about the 600s dude i wouldn't doubt that she was easily 600 easily in the 600s bro she probably was far and away above that i mean look at the size comparison to where she is right now compared to this this is insane like full moon face type shit i was in so much pain last night that i was like scream crying it was horrendous i had to use several different numbing agents i took more medicine than I want to admit to. Like, I couldn't... And you also got to acknowledge, too, when you're this big, it, it's not something as simple as to take, like, medicine, dude. Because your body, depending on how small your body is, depending on, like, the amount of fat that you're carrying on your body, the drugs will administer differently. So, like, for instance, if I drink alcohol, it will take not much alcohol at all to impregnate me with its alcoholic effects but for somebody like amber or bigger people in general it takes a longer time because you have to build up that intoxication right for me it would be simple easy whatever but for amber and other people like that you have to drink a lot you have to take a lot of a lot of drugs or whatever it may be to like even reach that same threshold that i would be under after like maybe a tenth of it if that makes any sense open my jaw like it was this whole side of my face, including my ear and my head. It was just a lot. You know, two years ago, the dentist told me just find ways to make the pain not so bad. That's a crazy ass thing. Like, oh, yeah, we could take it out. But like, literally, if we put you under anesthesia, it could kill you, which if you guys don't know, that's a real thing. Like if you if you are very, very fat and you have you're under anesthesia, there is a high probability that it could kill you. I don't know the exact cause, but when I did the research, it's a very high, it's a high, very high percentage, depending on how fat you are too. And Amber is like peak fatness as well. So I wouldn't have been surprised that she couldn't take it. She couldn't take it, dude. Which is one of the reasons why when they say like, oh, we have to lose a little bit more weight to get the fat surgery or whatever, is not because they want like, well, it is because they want to see that you're going to be willing to lose the weight, but it's also because if you go into the anesthesia, there's a guarantee, there's like no guarantee that you can wake up from it. Like you literally could die right there on the operation table. And you're going to have to lose weight before you can go on under anesthesia. And I'm just like, okay, just feeling pretty miserable. And then you just don't lose weight. Like, can you imagine the doctor saying that? Like, yeah, we could easily get this done if you lose weight. And then you go, okay, fucking two, three years later, still have the problem. No weight loss. Matter of fact, gained more weight. Because it still hurts, but nowhere near as bad as it was last night. And... I feel like it's gonna happen again tonight and I'm just bracing myself pretty much. Hey guys, so it is the next day. I am wearing That's crazy, dude. Just the title alone is insane. Bro, this is all in one year? This is just one year worth of shit? Fuck, bro. Just it we're not even halfway done with the year at this point. No, no, my bad. We are halfway done. July is what? Seven, I think. Dude, emergency room for belly button pain? What is belly button pain? Oh man, the the infestation, the growth, the societies, the the people growing in my belly button, they're revolting. They want to get out. They're done. They want to colonize the rest of my body. But they're they, they, like, I have to get this solved out right now. Why? Like having this many problems in a year is insane, bro. Okay. Like I get it. If you're already like, if you got, if you got like prior conditions that you have to deal with, like I'm not shitting on you, but like really think about the problems that Amber is having most of these things are going to be diagnosed from the weight that she is and the fact that she doesn't see this as like a reason to lose weight i just don't understand it like bro this was five years ago and you've already been through cancer you've already been through monster utis you've been through literally the health scares that would make most people go i gotta rethink my life i gotta make serious changes and they're nothing they're just nothing like they're just like oh whatever like i'm, I'm fat but like okay like even though i've had cancer literal cancer fuck it i'm gonna continue to be the way i am Dude, it's not, like, I just don't understand how you could do that, bro. How the fuck did you, why is it so easy for you to stay fat? Belly button pain? Okay, I'm interested. Let's hear. The same thing I wore yesterday. She has amazing hairline, though. I'll give her that. Like, what, a two-inch forehead, dude? Two fucking inch forehead, bro? Crazy. Because I woke up and just threw it on because it was right next to the bed. But I am actually 
about to go to the ER. Do you think it's because she can't wash it properly? Like, it, you gotta understand this, right? It's gonna sound really gross to say this, but when you're as big as Amber was at her peak, dude, you're gonna have, like, 9, 10, 11 inch deep belly button. No joke. No joke. Like, for me, if I was to scrub my belly button, it would be, like, one second. Like, I could literally grab the cloth, rub it three or four times, I'm good, right? But for somebody like Amber... I don't think like I don't even think you can you can even feel the sensation of the the inner part of your belly button that me or you could just have naturally. For her, she, it's just like it's so deep in there that you would need to go on like you would need to go on like baddragon.com to find one of those like 13 inch fucking double ended dildos with a stick at the end, end of him and to try to like put a washcloth at the end of it and just try to like you know, like inject yourself with one of those ginormous double-ended dildos to properly cleanse out that belly button. Even then, you don't even know. Like when you're scraping it out, what are you going to see? Like fish bones coming out, dude. Probably like sea creatures, right? A whole bunch of like fish, oatmeal packets, you know. Like the you, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff just flying out of your belly button. Because how long has your belly button been uncleansed? Probably years. Probably years. Years. And I always say this. Like if you have a belly button deeper than your vaginal crevice what are you doing that is incredible what the hell same thing with dudes if your gut protrude out more than your meat when it's erect you need to make some changes that's crazy as fuck if you're if you're literally a dude and you're using your meat as a bipod for your stomach bro you need to do something about that i just feel like everything's falling apart <laughs> like my whole body is just done and I don't blame it, <laughs> but yesterday I started noticing a pain slash a little bit of, I guess you can call it maybe puffiness and hardness near my belly button. Ugh. And my first instinct is hernia okay. because it also kind of hurt and I am bigger. So hernia is, is not going to be shocking. Okay. I was waking up in the middle of the night. I just noticed every time I tried to sit up a little the pain was a lot worse and now every time i bend it's a lot worse so it's it really seems like it's the people growing in her belly button dude they're revolting they're they're trying to expand outward and amber's not letting them so they're revolting right now the pitchforks and the torches are coming out we're done we're living in amber's belly button this is ridiculous i'm getting out of we're getting out of here we're done being held back it's a hernia i don't know Normally, I would just wait to go to my doctor or something, but I just feel like kind of scared because it could be something else. I'm not going to sit here and diagnose myself, but that's what it sounds like, and I'm pretty terrified. So I'm going to go to the ER. The doctor I saw was just like so nonchalant about how much pain I'm in and where what is he supposed located. to Bro, you got to understand, okay? When you're going to the emergency room, these dudes are going to be nonchalant because they're dealing with, no joke, depending on where you live, hundreds of patients a day. Okay, and some people are coming in with some bullshit, and then not only that, dude, they're moving from patient to patient to patient to patient to patient to patient. Like, they're not being tied down. They got so many people in these ER rooms, it's actually unfathomable for a lot of people to recognize the amount of stress these doctors and nurses are under, going from room to room to room to room to room. So, I'm not surprised, like, don't take it personal if a doctor comes in and he's nonchalant or he's just being, like, downed or, like, his energy isn't there fully. Bro, these guys are working literally like 10, 15, 20 hours a day. It's insane, okay? And I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing, but I just like, I think a lot of times people got to give these guys a little bit more credit. And I say guys as in like men or women. I'm not being sexist here. But I think people got to give them a little bit more leeway because these dudes are literally working all day for people. And I know that they're getting paid a lot, but even still, like this is a this is a daunting job, dude. And for Amber to sit there and go like, this, the doctor wasn't being nice to me. Like, I don't, you know, Oftentimes, I don't really care if a doctor's being nice to me. I just want proper care. You know, if I'm going in there, doctor has an attitude, stuff like that. Obviously, it's not something I want. But also, dude, hey, listen, as long as you're getting the job done, as long as you're treating me right, as long as I'm being the one that's being served, yeah, dude, that's fine. I don't care that you're having a bad day. I understand that you're having a bad day, right? I get it. I understand this stuff. But for some, Amber, like, oh, yeah, this doctor. Dude, focus on, like, did you get your, did you get the issue solved? Like, so nonchalant about how much pain I'm in and where it's located. They literally sent me home. I was like, okay, if the doctor's so nonchalant about the situation, literally sending me home without a diagnosis, maybe nothing's wrong. Sometimes they can't do much in 
the ER room. Like, it's the ER. It's the emergency room. They're supposed to, like... <sighs> They can do some stuff, like, they might be able to give you a CT scan, they might be able to, like, give you certain procedures and things like that, but oftentimes, they're just trying to do enough to send you home so you can reschedule your doctor and actually get the problem solved. These dudes are literally just there. If your arm is bleeding, they'll help you with that. If you're having, like, chest pains, they'll help you with that. But, like, this, these, most of these issues need to be solved and followed up with with a doctor your doctor your primary care physician somebody that is literally helping you not to, not the er doctor and this is like a problem i have so many times where like people go into the er they think that this is the final step it's not the final step this is the first step this is the first step to taking the next steps to get this shit actually solved like sometimes you can go to the er and get it solved like i remember i had wrist pain for a long time right and i went to the doctor i went to the er and they just gave me wrist straps and the problem was literally gone inside of a week that can happen, but oftentimes, especially when it comes to stuff like this, it isn't as simple as like, I go to the doctor and I'm going to be healed. You know what I'm talking about? Like you're going to throw a fucking healing potion on you. Like you're playing Minecraft and you're going to be good. No, these things are complicated, especially for somebody of your size. It's going to be very difficult to diagnose you, especially given the fact that you don't fit in conventional machines. You are literally so fat that like the idea of normal machines for you is, is not normal. Okay. Like they can't give you they can't give you certain procedures to try to like see where you're at because it's not plausible for you somebody at your size so i kind of just was enduring the pain and trying to ignore it and i woke up today not only does it hurt a little bit worse but now this is like tmi but hi and berlin is trying to be honest with you guys my belly button is bleeding okay okay yeah them dudes going crazy in there, bro. So it's a rave, dude. They got the glow sticks, man. They going crazy. It's not funny. It's not funny, but bro, okay. I don't know, man. It just seems like all these issues that she's having are they're not good issues, obviously. They're not like simple things, bro. And it sucks that the doctor couldn't do anything for you, bro. And now you're bleeding. Dude, when is enough? When is enough enough? Like, what do we make the actual decision to lose some weight? Like an actual decision. I'm going to go back to the ER. Do I, it. I'm going to go to a different ER. I feel like if you go to the ER, you should... She must have some monster health insurance, dude. If she could just easily go from one to the next ER, like daily visits to the fucking ER, bro. This is the same day, too, by the way. Like, this is one... There's not even this different day. July 9th. This is literally the same fucking day. She's going to multiple ERs, bro. I got to know what her... Like, they, they do bill you, right? No? D does your insurance just cover that? I want to see that bill for the month. That shit's got to be crazy, bro. ER visits are expensive. You know, get the test done to be the deciding factor of what's wrong with you. Like, you should never leave the ER. Like, oh, you're fine. You're just in pain in the most weirdest spot hey ever. Guys. It's not, like I said earlier, it's not that simple. Like, you can't just go to the ER and have that dude throw a health pot at you. If you watch our last vlog, you know that I went to the ER yesterday nothing they left i left without a diagnosis or anything like literally nothing and i woke up today even worse and if you didn't watch that last vlog the last three days i've been having belly button like navel pain but it's not like inside of my stomach it's the outside it hurts mainly when i bend i woke up today and now i'm bleeding out of my belly button so something is obviously not right i was gonna see my actual doctor but i kind of can't because it's the weekend and the ER yesterday said if I get any worse to go back to the ER, but I'm not going back to that ER okay. because they just seem very nonchalant. So I'm going to go to a different one. Do I'm it. just really nervous. I just hope nothing's like really wrong. This hospital, ER, way better than the one I went to yesterday. Oh, shit. Like, oh, she's actually in the, of... she's actually in the ER here. You can tell with these like medical fucking terrible. Oh, you can't see it. But there's like terrible, disgusting. These these like keyboards and stuff like that. They almost never use them. They always have like the same fucking whatever. You know the the same fucking background being played or whatever. Of it, you know the nurse came in, looked at my belly button. Then and she was like, "Ugh, what is this, bro? Damn, is this a bucket of chicken? No, why you got chicken in here?" Almost immediately after the doctor did, and he cleaned it up. I didn't realize actually, <sighs> bro. It's just such a crazy thing to be like, the doctor came in and cleaned out my belly button, dude. I just don't know why that's, that's such a crazy, it's such a crazy statement, dude. 
it's such a curveball, dude. It just like it comes out of nowhere too. And the fact that she says this like it's nothing is insane. It's so crazy, bro. That'd be like me going like, okay, guys. So today, uh, you know, I went to the aquarium. It was really fun. I got sucked off by a penguin. It happened four times. We looked at the seahorses. It was great. It was awesome. It was real fun. Like you see how like it just randomly comes out of nowhere and you just weren't expecting it. That's what it's like here. Like it's just such a crazy statement to be like the, the doctor came in and cleared it up, cleaned it up, cleaned up what? Why the fuck is it that easy to say? Like how bad it was bleeding until, you know, he was cleaning it and I was just like, wow. He swabbed it, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. He came back and the he amoebas. told me it might be an infection like nothing is like for sure he's like it might be an infection you can't tell you know the colonoscopy things like the, you know those things that they put up your butt like the snakes with the cameras at the end they couldn't do that in your belly button no like i don't know what the correct medical procedure would be here but again like why is this so convenient for her and he said it might be something that needs to be surgically fixed and i was just like what she came back with papers what? about cellulitis and i was just like okay that's weird and she explained you know he's just giving you this just in case this is what it is and i'm just like like i know from experience everything about cellulitis because i've had it twice i was like literally on the verge of death it damn was one of the most scarier times of my life you know today's sunday tomorrow's monday as soon as it's monday like literally i am going to call a doctor's office make an appointment for usually doctor's offices are opened on sunday like in the sense of like you can call them up and be like hey can i get this appointment like they're not you don't need your actual doctor to be there in order to make an appointment if your doctor's not there he's not like booked that day it's fine usually like the receptionist or like the person working at the front they'll they'll schedule the appointment on the weekend so they're usually still there usually i don't know where she's going to the hospital but if I call up my doctor's office right now, there's somebody working there on the weekends. It's just like I won't be able to go there on that date to see my doctor because he may not be working that day. But the point I'm making is like, I don't know. She just has a way. I think that she just says shit to try to make it seem like she's doing a lot. But in reality, she's doing the bare minimum. And it's sad to say this because you shouldn't be doing the bare minimum, especially when it comes to taking care of yourself, right? Like in this scenario, like, oh, I'm going to call tomorrow and do it. It's always tomorrow. It's always like pushing the can down the road. And then like tomorrow I'll do it. Or the next day I'll do it. Or next week I'll actually have this problem fixed. And like this and this and this. And that might be okay for certain things, right? Maybe you can kick the can down the road for certain things. But for things like this, when it comes to your health, it's just not good. You know, like I know some people that kick student loans down the road. Like they'll just keep postponing it. And the government will... Like, they'll go, okay, yeah, we won't, like, we don't need you to pay it right now. That's okay. But for certain other things, like your health, bro, this should not be something you're fucking kicking down the road. That's crazy. This is your fucking health we're talking about. Like, you literally have a civilization grown in your belly button. You don't even know how to get rid of them. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. So if you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. If you like the Amberlynn Reed content, let me know down below because I appreciate those comments. I do read all the com comments. So if you want to leave one down there, I do read it. I do interact with things. Thank you so much for commenting, by the way. All those things help me grow in the algorithm. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in pink because there's a pink thing on my bed. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's pink. And it's on my bed. Um, leave it down below. Pink, you know, hashtag mean girl hashtag barbie hashtag do it right sis hashtag slay queen edges all that stuff amazing beautiful uh, awesome if you're a subscriber thank you if you're a member thank you you guys are all amazing people i appreciate everybody here um by the way you smell amazing today you're you're glowing wow your skincare has really 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 picked up and i can tell that you have been taking care of yourself immensely your diet has improved you smell really great today i love the way those shoes fit wow what hold up huh whoa Dude, those shoes are nice. Those are really nice shoes. Where'd you get those? I'm interested in buying new shoes, and I saw your shoes, and I like your flavor and your taste and the way that you go about the elegance of your body. Can you please tell me what those shoes are and how'd you got them? Were those bestowed upon you by some type of deity? Because they almost kind of look like they shouldn't be real. But then again, I say that about you. So, I mean, they could be real, obviously. But you're just so pretty. You're so amazing. You're so handsome. You smell so great today. I love everything about you. You smell great. But, you know, there's one thing I don't like about you. I hate it, actually. I hate it. And the thing is, I'm not next to you. That's what I hate about it. That's one thing I hate about you. But anyway, 
we're gonna end the video here if you want to check out my social medias it'll be linked down below in the description it's just my instagram twitter discord all that stuff will be linked down below in the description of this video and the description of the channel enjoy the rest of your day guys